So the weirdest thing has happened to us, I think, <laughs> that's ever happened to us. <laughs> like, really strange. Let me tell you, let me explain where we are and what's going on. So, about a week ago, I was researching, like, the most haunted places in England. And, like, deserted villages and yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, deserted villages. Just something a bit different. Yeah, I thought, well. oh, that'll be a cool, like, thing to kind of explore and stuff. So, researching different things. Amongst those was somewhere called Furnace Abbey in Cumbria. Um, anyway, I said to you, didn't I, like, there's not... We won't do it. We'll, you know, I couldn't kind of piece together where we wanted to go and stuff. So, just kind of left it at that. Just set off as we normally do and just, like, looked for somewhere, didn't we? Yeah. In fact, one, you, were, you were saying we were going to go to Scotland, weren't you? Yeah. And I said, no, let's, like, go down towards, like, the Lake District and stuff. And let's do something a bit different because we haven't been there in a while. So, we sort of set off down here, didn't we? And then I had a look on Park for night um, and just pick somewhere random like we normally do so yeah so i've been i've been researching one of them were furnace abbey so as emma says just ended up in late district so i said oh i'm getting a bit tired so we had a look on park for night found a spot and as we turned the corner there's this beautiful abbey still didn't think of it so we'd, we'd sort of sat down had some tea and stuff and then i looked at where we were on google maps and it's furnace abbey in cumbria and how weird how weird is that so weird. and it's it's one of the most haunted places in it's england like the second most haunted or something, something in like england that yeah there's, like there's that. meant to be three ghosts that haunt this place one of them's a monk i'll tell you all about it um so basically it's about half past nine at night now we are staying here the abbey is right next to us it's a full moon so it's making it like extra <laughs> creepy so we're gonna we're gonna go out and we're gonna uh, we're gonna explore it a little bit but seriously weird how we ended up here just so strange <laughs> let's go and have a look as we were explaining it is really really weird how we uh, ended up here it's not scary at all but it's not scary at all no not slightly um <laughs> So basically, there's meant to be three ghosts that haunt Furnace Castle. Um, there's meant to be a monk that is seen just like walking through the walls. And then there's meant to be a girl. Now the girl, um, apparently her lover, um, had to go out to sea and he never came home. And it's said that she still is heard crying and she sits and, and apparently you can see her crying for a long lost That's love. That's a bit freaky. It is a little bit freaky. And the third one is apparently a headless monk that gallops his horse uh, down the road and then disappears into the abbey. So, uh, yeah, a little, yeah. Bit, a little bit weird. It is a little bit weird and it is a little bit eerie, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's not terrifying, no, but it is a little bit eerie, but it's absolutely spectacular ah, to see, is, especially yeah. at night because the moonlight and everything, it's yeah, amazing. I'll get some footage in the morning of it. Absolutely um, amazing. So, uh, yeah. We'll, You're we'll, not scared, are you? I'm not scared at all, no. Boo! <laughs> <laughs> Going down the road, what about a tattered woman carrying a chihuahua? <laughs> <laughs> So that were uh, that abbey were a little bit weird. It's freaked me out a little bit. But what's freaked me out even more? And I'm not even making this up. The lights have just gone out in the van, and they just yeah. randomly had to put them back on. There was no reason for it. There's probably a reasonable explanation, but we got back in the van and lights went out. So that were. Thing is, when it's stuff like this, though, you start sort of yeah, you're hiding yourself. More, you're hiding yourself up. Yeah, like normally, we've just got our lights are out, yeah. but. Because it were like, we'd kind of built ourselves up for it. <laughs> uh, we get a nice cup of that, we warm up a bit because it was really cold out there. Yeah, but wait till you see that abbey in the daylight, it's absolutely stunning. Cooking some tea now. Cooking. We're having sausages. We're having chorizo style sausages, vegan. vegan. Um, some uh, broccoli with peas and leeks, um, green beans, don't like them, so you'll have to eat them ones, um, and some garlic butter in that. And then some mash, so it should be Sounds all right. Lovely. Heating's on. <laughs> <laughs> Daisy's just had her dinner. Say hello, Daisy.
Okay, so after our last video um, of us saying that we've never been moved on and we've never sort of felt like we've had to leave an area, um, for the first time ever we've had to sort of pack up and take off. <laughs> um, not serious, were it really? No, we're not serious. It was just a, a, basically a load of cars turned up, um, probably up to things that they shouldn't have been up yeah. to. Um, <laughs> And yeah, it just, just felt like it were better to move on, really. It's um, just your instinct sometimes, and we were sort of toying with, like, do we sort of say something about this or not? But I think it's worth just saying that if your instincts tell you yeah, something's not move, right, just, just get up and move. You know, it's not a big deal. So we've moved probably about maybe 10 minutes drive yeah, up road. we're going to go back in the morning and obviously get the footage of the, uh, of the Abbey in the day and stuff. But yeah, just uh, one of those things. It's not a major deal, but we're going to now go and get warm again and get into bed. <laughs> See you tomorrow. <laughs> so this is where we ended up staying last night in this uh, little car park overlooking all the uh, famous hikes up the different mountains in a row. It's quite cool. Yeah, that were a nice sleep in the end, wasn't it? Not after, <laughs> after we moved. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to check out the uh, the abbey uh, and we'll tell you a bit about it because it's really interesting so uh, we'll go do that now. So behind me you can see Furness Abbey, um, it was built in 1123, it's believed to be the second most richest monastery um, in England, uh, it's absolutely massive and um, we're going to show you around and um, tell you a little bit about it. This is the church area. It's really, really kind of um, imposing. It really takes your breath away. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to get out. I feel like I'm going to be here forever. <laughs> So you can see behind me here, um, up there on that second level, um, would have been, I think, the corridor that would have led to where the monks would have slept. Um, and they'd go across there on a morning when they were called down um, for prayer, which was two o'clock in the morning, um, and come down the stairs into the church. So the monks came over um, to settle here um, from Normandy, um, led by Stephen, who later became the King of England. Um, and they settled here um, because there's a good supply of kind of water and land. They first moved over to Tulketh um, and then later over to here, to the Vale of Nightshade, which was on the uh, Furness Peninsula, which then was a part of Lancashire. And if you look at this bit here, it shows you some, a lot of it's still quite intact. This is um, their dorm, basically, where the monks would have stayed. So it's rumoured that there's um, tunnels that run under here that allowed the monks to receive supplies um, when they were here. And there's a kind of folk tale that states that um, King John's jewels are also stored somewhere underneath in these tunnels and also the Holy Grail. So we're going to make our way down here and the building in the background is the old infirmary which has still got a roof on it so we're going to go check that out. The uh, architecture is absolutely outstanding, it's amazing and this wasn't the only um, monks um, abbey that they owned, they owned a lot of land all over um, and they built a lot more buildings, were really wealthy. There's just not one bit of any of this that has not been thought through. Every single part of this, every area of it is just down to a little detail and just really amazing. It's all carved out. So when they were doing the uh, repair work to try and save the abbey, they found um, an abbot, the skeleton of an abbot, um, and he is thought to be uh, of around the 12th century um, and they found him with a staff uh, and a ring 
um, and even some some clothing but the skeleton's intact so the staff that the abbot was found with um contains like metal on the top of it i think it's copper um and it's it's engraved and sort of carved out and it's a picture of saint michael um, and round the edge of it it's got a dragon so he stood with a sword in his hand ready to slay the dragon so this is the uh, west tower uh, which is circa 1500 so this must have been a later addition um, and it was about 160 feet high what you found that's gonna be our new house <laughs> Look at that for a tiny ah, house. Ah, look at that. That's a tiny house, isn't it? So I hope we've been able to give you a little bit of a reflection of the splendour and the architecture and the preservation um, of Furness Abbey. Um, but we really do encourage you to come down and look for yourselves because it's just a one-of-a-kind, amazing, amazing experience. Um, well worth coming and seeing it for yourselves. Um, and just being able to step back in time, like... A lot of our channel, obviously, is to uh, to show you the best things that the UK and Europe have to offer. Um, and England has a lot of castles and heritage and history and being able to step back in time into that is absolutely amazing. Um, so we're just going to head back to Roman in the van now and uh, check out further into the Lake District. So I'm about some all butter blood orange curd. And I got some caramel fudge, obviously. Guess what? We're just making a brew. The kettle's dinted, look, bless him. Oh, so <laughs> yeah, exactly. We haven't named her yet, have we? Thank you all very much for your suggestions. Some really cool names. So, we're going to name the kettle and we're going to let Daisy choose uh, what the kettle's going to be called from your suggestions. So, the game is we've put a little bit of food in each envelope and on each envelope is one of your suggested names and whichever one Daisy goes for first is the name of the kettle. Right, Daisy. Do you understand the rules of the game? Are you ready? You're all the at uh, at uh, wait. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> you have to pick one, just one. Right? And then we can name the kettle. Get it. She's having a good sniff. She's not sure. It's that one. It's that it. one. Which one's that one? Have a look. Gretel. Gretel the you kettle. You can have your little bit of bread now. <laughs> <laughs> Gretel the kettle. Well done, Daisy. So the kettle is now called Gretel. Thank you very much to the person that suggested that. I believe that was uh, Donna that suggested that. Thank and we're not going to let Daisy that. eat all the rest of the bits of bread. We're going to put the rest in the bin. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Daisy. Well done. Gretel the kettle. Reese is getting Gretel on, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> well done, Daisy. So, um, the lights have gone out again in the uh, in the van. It's something to do with the power through to it. We're going to have a look at it this week. Um, so at the minute I'm cooking uh, by torchlight uh, and the uh, candles, uh, also now the light source as well as the heating source. It's romantic, it's lovely. It is romantic. <laughs> <laughs> So we're just about to leave this uh, beautiful um, park up that we've had last night. We had a really good night's sleep. It was really lovely. And um, we're going to head down to uh, Coniston now and sort of have a look around um, the town down there. Um, we will come back here though. We, we've parked up here before um, a few times now, um, and we will definitely come back uh, because in the middle, as um, we discovered yesterday, is a little island called Wildcat Island that you can canoe out to, and it's kind of like a little private area where you can go and have a picnic and stuff like that. So definitely want to try that out at some point in the future. Um, but anyway, for now, um, we're going to leave this gorgeous place and uh, head off and see what else we can find. Mummy gone. She's gone in the shop. 
So we've been sent a lovely gift from uh, one of our viewers uh, that we're going to show you in a bit. But first we're going to check out this lovely little village called Coniston. Uh, it's kind of in the heart of the Lake District, isn't it? It is, yeah, and we've just seen the first signs of spring. <laughs> signs of Snow spring, drops. yes! <laughs> So that was Coniston in the lakes. Um, we're just going to uh, have some lunch here in the car park now, uh, and then show you this uh, this cool gift that we've been given. So for lunch, we're having a bacon courgette pasta. Uh, it's the, not real bacon. Not real bacon. It's the <laughs> fake bacon. Fake bacon. Bacon. I think they call it. Don't they? Bacon. Yeah. Bacon. That's what they call it. <laughs> I think. Yeah. Really simple. Chop up some courgettes. Um, fry them off in a little bit of um, butter or olive oil or whatever you want to put them in. You get some bacon. Um, real if you want real bacon or pretend bacon, um, whichever. Um, fry that off with it as well. Um, it just literally takes a few minutes. Just stick some pasta on. Um, drain your pasta, mix in your um, bacon and your courgette. Um, I usually add a bit of spinach in as well, um, and then mix in some creme fraiche, and that's it. So there we are, lovely fake bacon and courgette pasta, delicious. So as we were saying, one of our viewers, uh, John, uh, has kindly sent us a gift. It's um, it's some coffee, and he brews it all himself, and it's meant to be one of the nicest coffee blends. So we've got three packs that he's sent us. The main thing I'm glad about is the smell. I mean, it's just, I don't even know how to describe it. It smells absolutely gorgeous. It's also sent us um, this lovely, um, what do you call it? Like percolators, aren't they? Yeah, it's lovely so. percolator, it's very posh. So Gretel the kettle is uh, warming up nicely. So we're gonna try this one. Um, it's the weekend blend. It's chocolate smoke hazelnut. John, very kind gift. Oh, it smells delicious. Oh, wow, what a difference! Is it really nice? Oh, that is really <laughs> nice. Oh, it's really nice. Do you like it? Yeah, I do like it. The scenery is absolutely beautiful around here. Oh, and a shout out to uh, William as well. William watches us every week, so uh, thanks for watching, dude. So we're just we're just here in Ulverstone. We're just uh, being in a charity shop. I've got the best buy ever. Shall I show me? Yeah, if you Wait want. a minute. <laughs> it's a special carrier just for dogs so when we take daisy on a walk on a hike grease thinks i'm mad because she doesn't always walk that far and she struggles we don't have to take the pram we can like take her in this and then just need another one for me to go in so you can carry me <laughs> <laughs> so we're just going to carry on checking this out uh this little town uh and uh yeah head back to romany So as you know, Emma doesn't like planning, but I don't mind it. So make sure that you tune in next week. You're not going to want to miss next week's episode. I've got a little surprise planned for Emma. Um, so make sure you check that out. It is going to be absolutely epic. And don't forget to hit subscribe. It helps the channel out, doesn't it? Oh, it does definitely. Yeah, I'm a little bit nervous about what you've got planned <laughs> <for> next week. <laughs> Always remember, guys, write, write your, your own, own story. story. <laughs> Catch you next time.